Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this, it's kind of like a winged gift box I guess, and you slide out the top here and it reveals this acetate kind of tray and you can fill that with treats. Now you can have it this way if you want, so that's how it will look, but you can also have it lying flat as well, so it's entirely up to you. I really love how it's come together, it's using the dies from the latest it's the box number two from Papercraft Society. However, I am going to show you how you can also make this without a die. Okay, so everybody will be able to do this. To be honest, all the die is actually doing is giving you this pretty edge here. And you can create that with any of your kind of edge dies and things like that. So yeah, I really love it. Love the colours. Something a little bit different. Pinks and blues and purples. So not your traditional Christmas colours, but I think they work really well. I'm still waiting for these to dry. So I'm doing them one at a time because I don't want them to bleed in together. So I'm going to put another one. So I have three and I've just used the Nouveau. That colour went perfectly actually with this collection. So, and then you can see there I've got the little die cut snowflakes. This is holly, but I thought, you know, let's do it to match. So we've got purples there. That's one of the stamps as well from the set along with the frame. And then the pretty decorative papers and the ribbon is also all from the collection. Okay, so you would have seen the unboxing last week for this kit and I will link that up here if you haven't seen it. If it is something completely new to you and you're thinking, oh, what is this Papercraft Society? Then check out the unboxing videos. There will be two on there now because this only launched, the first one was only last month. And, um, and take a look at them. They're really, really good. They're great value for money. They do ship outside the UK. You just have to pay. It's free postage within the UK. It's six pound postage outside of the UK. And that may vary a little bit more depending on where you are. But, but this is one of the pieces. You, you get this envelope in every single box and the idea is is that you stack them like a book so you have a row of them you know as the the months continue but in here you have all your bits and pieces you do get a lot more as well in the kit it comes in a nice size box but I've just condensed a lot of it down into here so today I'm using the dies you don't get the magnetic sheet I have put mine on to that it just makes it much much easier to store and see everything so I'm using those and then I've already stamped the top of there as you can see it is really lovely it was one of my favorites actually when I done the unboxing I said how much I love that font and the mix of the you know the two there but it's this one here and then it's that frame one there but you can see all the lovely ones you get on there you get a nice mix and then I've pulled out the pattern papers already and um, yeah I think that was it you've also got an embossing folder you've got your dies yeah there's all lots and lots of bits and pieces first of all what we will do is let's die cut I'll show you how we need to do the die cutting so I'll go through the measurements and then we can do that one while I've got the school board out here so you can see there's the snowflakes they are really nice excuse the um I've got some Nouveau drop there I'm still trying to rub off my hand but look how delicate they are really they really are lovely they'd look nice in vellum as well actually just to give that more authentic snowflake look. And then I've gone ahead and already die cut the holly and the berry die there. It's a really nice one again. And that's this one just here. And then you also get these, which are your crystal brads. So I'm using them as an embellishment. So you'll see there where I've stuck them. I've just cut off the actual split pin piece and then just with some hot glue, I've attached them onto there. So I just thought that was a nice little touch. So you want some acetate. Now don't worry if you don't have acetate, there's no reason for you to have that tray, this piece here in acetate. It can easily be cardstock. Okay, I just quite liked the acetate look. So whatever you're using, you'll want, you want it to be 11 and 3 eighths of an inch by nine. Okay. In fact, while I've got the scoreboard out, we might as well score it. It's really simple scoring. Along the, I would say that whenever you're scoring acetate, although I get this one with the scoreboard, that's perfect when you're working with cardstock, but when you work with acetate, you want something that's really going to embed the score lines so I'm just using my stylus metal one here but along the 11 and 3 eighths of an inch side you want to score it three inches so really push that down this is very thick acetate it's the the go-to one I'll share the links below and then you want to score at eight and three eighths of an inch okay that and then pop it along the nine inch side and you just want to score it three and six Okay, so really simple scoring. All of that will be in my blog as always, but now you should have something that looks like that. I know it's a bit difficult to see, but you should see that hitting the light there. You can see you should have your sections, three kind of rows, okay, like that. Then, okay, and then 
in the kit you will get your cardstocks. You get three sheets of three different colours and you also get your pattern papers. So I've gone for that purpley colour. Now if you're not using this dye and you don't have the kit, then you're going to need If you've got, so this is the way that I want it to be, this is the right way up for me. Just flip it over and score it one inch and then flip it back and score it two and a half. Then just rotate it so you're on the other side now and again flip it over and score it one inch and flip it back and score at two and a half. Because now you're going to fold the two middle score lines here, so they're mountains, and these outer ones are going to become valleys. So by just flipping the cardstock over, you won't get any cracking. Because this is white core cardstock that you're working with, it's more prone to cracking. Or I wouldn't, well, maybe not more prone to, but it's certainly if it does crack, you're going to see it more because of the white core. It's not color core card, okay? But white core is great for other techniques which they show you in the inspirational book. So when you do um, embossing, with embossing folded, you get some great effects. So you want two pieces that are going to look like that. Now for those of us that do have the die, so it's the larger one I'm working with here, and you get these holes. Now you don't have to keep them in there. I have chosen to. I may well take them out when I go to do other projects, but I'm leaving them in because you can just you just need a little pair of pliers and you will cut those out. But what you want to do is you need to lay down your die and make sure, use a little bit of tape, but you get it right up to the very, very edge, as close to the edge as you can without the die going actually over. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And then what we're going to do is some partial die cutting, because we want to create this effect at both ends. So I'm just going to grab my cutting plates. Now I actually find, and this is no criticism to a Gemini machine at all, but I find doing partial die cutting much easier on a manual die machine rather than an electronic. I just feel I've got a lot more control and my Sizzix, which I'm just bringing in now, I can just, it's got a nice flat platform on both sides so I can lay everything down. Now I also do highly recommend the magnetic base plate. I've got lots of magnetic shims and they just curl and they do all kinds of things and they stretch and they just don't always end up being a, you can't lie your dies flat on a lot of them I don't think, but this here is solid, this will never ever warp and I've had this a long time and it's absolutely amazing. But it means that you can keep your dies the right way up, for me I like to be able to cut down with the cutting line underneath, I don't like turning things upside down and not being able to see underneath, I've never... I've never done mine like that, so again, the Gemini kind of works that way, so it's been quite a thing for me to kind of get used to that. Whereas with this, the magnet is so strong that your magnet stays in place there. This is bowed a little bit, but all of that is, I can feel it, it has caught to the, the magnet below. So yeah, really, really do like that. Anyway, enough about that. What you then want to do is we need to cut as far down, I would say, you want to leave about an inch where you don't cut. Now, Anything that is between two plates will cut, so anything that's not is not going to cut. So here you can see I'm leaving this here without the plate over, so none of that will cut, but everything under this side will. So I can push it through, and once it catches on the two plates, I can just run that through, get that away. And then if I just remove this, it's cut beautifully at this end, completely. And then here, you will see it's still attached, and that's what we want. So I'm just going to trim off those sides there. Okay, so you will have something like this. Then, get that end, and you need to just, you can feel, feel it kind of catch on the side, so you know it's nice and lined up that way, but just bring it down again, getting it right up to the very edge there, and using the same tape. But I can see underneath my cutting lines have sat perfectly over that there and then pop it back on here again it's caught on the magnet I can feel it I know this is all bowing because it's such a thin um, die but this is all kind of um, gripped to the magnet and now I mean you don't need to run the whole thing through if you've got plates I mean look at the state of this I'm still holding out for it <laughs> and um, I do have a newer one actually but I don't want to use it yet until this completely cracks but I wouldn't put the plate over all of it just in case you have got some, you know, yours might be a more kind of um, use than mine. Some of these markings will go through onto your cardstocks. You can always put a piece of white copy paper in between, which you, you've seen me do a lot. But all I'm going to do here is just cover enough there 
and just push that back through. You want it to take both plates. There we go. And just feel it grip. And that's it. And I can just pull that one out and that one out. And you'll see there it's just come away perfectly. Now if you do get anything still attached, which I have a tiny little bit there, it literally is just a whisper. You can just take that off. So now we've got that lovely detail at both ends of our cardstock and you can see the cardstock's perfect. They've got no in prints or anything. You do have these lines here because they are actually the the kind of the default score right score line. So that's where they want you to fold for the inspiration that's in the booklet, but it's so minor and you can't really see it that I'm just ignoring it and I'm going to add my own um, score lines in a moment. So I'm just going to pop all this away. Again, I'm just going to quickly score this one here. Okay, so now I've got two pieces like this. Now if you, again, you don't have the kit, before you fold all of this, and if you've got any nice decorative, you might have a nice decorative edge punch or some dies, then just pop them through just to give you something there. But you can see now how these will end up sitting over the top of each other, like so. All right, it's quite a cool effect, I really like it. I've done, I have done these winged kind of gift bags in the past, so again, if I can find the playlist or if there's enough to make up a playlist, then I will add them all together. Okay, so next I'm gonna grab my acetate and you just wanna fold and burnish the score lines. I always like to kind of work them first and then just burnish them afterwards with my bone folder, just to make sure you get them all in place. Okay, so you can certainly see now better where those score lines are. What you're going to do next is you're just going to cut down, so you'll have three equal squares on each of the short ends, and then along the top here, the longer side, you'll have a square, a rectangle and a square. So it's these shorter sides that we want to work along here, so you can see that. And you're just going to cut down these score lines to the first score line. Like so just like that okay now again you do want to take wedges off of the outer ones because these are going to fold in just as you would normally do with any other gift bag probably not using the right scissors for acetate there they're too bulky you want something that you can really get in there with these are much better all I'm doing is just taking a wedge off of each side. Okay, so you can just see there. Just bring in some scraps so you can see this. There we go. You can just see I've taken a wedge off of that one. That one just stays as a square. And then this one again on the outside, I'm just cutting a wedge off. That one's gone a bit skew with because I cut a bit wonky there. And then go around to the other end and again just cut down those two score lines. Again, I always tuck that one under, you've noticed there. It just means you can get into these ones a lot easier. And again, I'm just going to cut away little wedges. Okay, so next what you want to do is we need to add some red tape to stick this all down. So as I always say, when you're working with acetate, always use red tape, much, much better. It grips well and it will hold. So the ones where you've cut the wedges out of, they are going to go in, in behind that one in the middle. Okay, and don't worry, you know, you're going to see some of the tape in a minute, but when I give you the measurements to these pieces, they're going to go over perfectly and just hide all of that. So I'll just open it up again. So this is the one in the in the middle which we want to keep perfect and not put any tape on. It's the two outer ones. So I'm just going to run some glue right up near the top score line and then just one kind of further down. Okay, like that. And then flip it and add some tape again on the same ones. Okay, now also you need to decide which end of your tray you want to have your little pulley. Okay, so if I take that out, this is what, what we're going to achieve. So I've got this little pulley here, so I've made a hole through that one, but you'll see it doesn't go all the way through because I've hidden it with that piece. So with this piece of plastic, 
in the middle. If I just lay that there just so you can see a bit better, it's this middle one here. I just want to, with my screw punch, I want to add a hole in the middle. I am going to eyeball it. I think that's probably about right. Give it a little bit of a helping hand. Okay, so now you'll see I've got that. And then I'm going to grab one of these squares. Now these here measure, should have given me that, you want four pieces and these measure two and seven eighths of an inch squared. Okay, then pop one underneath. This is just so you know where your hole is. Okay, like so. You'll see I've already put red tape on all of mine. So these are slightly smaller than the square because the square is three by three on the acetate. And then this is only if you're doing a pulley. If you're not doing this, then don't worry. And then I'm just going to put a mark there with my pen. And then again, I'm going to just cut that one. So now I can pop that over there and it's going to sit in the square and it's also the hole's going to line up. Okay, so get that done now, and next we're going to start sticking it together. And um, in fact, what we can do is add the ribbon first. That was uh, that's the most important part. So I've just got some of the ribbon that comes with the kit. I'm just going to trim it. I've got about two inches there. Fold it in half, like so. And then I'm just going to thread it through. I like it so it's like that, so you can see the tab. Some people have them on the side like that, but I like mine so it faces... Up. just I find it a bit easier to pull that way okay so keep that like that and then so I've taken my and then what I'm going to do actually is just add a little bit of red tape either side just popped a little bit of tape either side of the ribbon there and then if you just split your ribbon open and you can stick one piece on top and one on the bottom. You just bring that up to the camera so you can see what I've done. So you can see I've just split it and then just stuck it over the sticky tape there. So from the outside, you've got a nice little pulley. Then I've taken the backing off of that side and you're just going to bring it around. Make sure you've got a nice right angle and just stick that down. Take the backing off of this one. Again, bring it around and everything should line up nicely you can just kind of work out you know you can just see the sticky bit there but once we add this all over it it completely gets concealed so again at this end I'm just going to take the backing off wrap it under like so so now we have our tray okay and then we can stick all these pieces down. So like I said, you want four pieces that are two and seven eighths of an inch squared. The one with the hole, I'm gonna stick down first. And I'm just gonna feed it through the hole and then just kind of pop it on an angle. And as you pull that through, just line it all up. There we go, okay? So again, I'm gonna pop one inside. I'm just gonna stick these down. Make sure you line them up perfectly with the one underneath because, I mean, again, I am using the white core card so you would see the white, but um, if you're using colour core then it won't matter. But now you can see that all lines up nicely. So I'll do this end. Okay, and just work the bottom score line there just to make sure everything stays nice and square. And just kind of re-bend them. There you have it, really nice tray. Okay, so let's just pop that one back in here. Now, with your case, it's best to put it together by wrapping it around your tray. So, in fact, I'm going to get rid of all them because they're full of static and they get everywhere. Okay, so I've got the bottom there. I'm going to sit that on and then put everything around. That way, you know it's all going to fit. First of all, I'm just going to grab some of my liquid glue and you just want to pop it on one side here. Just cover all of this. Whatever yours looks like, you just want to pop it all on one side and then just pop the one on top and I just need to make sure I get mine all lined up because obviously I've got those holes there but it's easy to do because the dies are the same. So, Okay, while that side was drying I just went ahead and just fussy cut that one there so it's going to look really nice when it's done. Okay, then I'm going to pop that in 
and you want to do the same on this side but I just think to make sure that you're going to get a nice slide you should anyway because I've done all the measurements but if you just wrap it around and stick it so just open that up just pop some glue again on this side again just bring them together okay so while that's drying I've got my cardstock here to decorate the top so I've got a piece of silver card from my own stash and that is two and three quarters by five and a quarter and then the decorative paper which is from the kit is two and a half by five okay so I've already put some foam in between the pattern paper and the silver and then I'm just going to stick this right on top so I'm just going to sit that one right in the center there you'll get a nice frame like so and then I've got my topper so this one here I'm going to again pop some foam on the back it doesn't matter which way up this goes because if you change your mind you can just take the tray out and just turn it around another way so that's going to go like that and then I've got all these pieces here which I want to stick down so I've got my hot glue gun on and I just stamp this using that ink as well because these are the three inks that you get in the kit so I use the pink on this one and then I've used the purple on this one here so they all match perfectly but I'm now going to just stick these down actually I want to follow that one because I like that and um, yeah finish it off Okay, and then with the brads if you just open them up and just trim be careful watch your eyes because sometimes they do flick off but I've got these um, very strong scissors that I use for cutting things like this she says and they're not even cutting oh my god they, they were fine just now typical isn't it you, you do something when you're filming and it doesn't work gosh can't even grip it now wow that's what has happened there okay let's try something else okay that's cut perfectly or oh, maybe they're on their way out now then maybe i've uh, used them too much so you're just cutting the ends off you can cut through both at the same time but you're probably really going to damage your scissors that way so i'm just going to take a little bit off i am cutting where the fold is so where they kind of join together that's what i'm removing okay and then I'm just going to push down on my mat but just fold it back in again so they flatten so all those those little kind of because they probably will be a bit sharp you just want to push them so if I show you what they look like so you can see them there oh so you can see there what I've cut off you want to push them back in so this does not help my nails there we go so now you'll have these flat pieces and then you can just pop your hot glue onto the back and again I'm just going to stick them on here on there like so so again while well, that's now just setting you can finish this bit here so I'm going to grab the ribbon now I've already made some other projects so I'm hoping I've got enough because you'll see them in the next coming weeks. But if you just thread that through and tie a bow, I'm going to have a very, very small bow. I might even have to do a knot now. Oh no. I might have to do like a, just a decorative knot. It's not going to look as nice, is it? I'm going to change. I'm going to go and just grab some other white. Okay, so you will have enough because I've already gone ahead and made other projects. So I've used it for, yeah, for those. But... This white will look just as nice. I've cut way too much now, it's one extreme to the other. I have tons of this white though, so. <laughs> Let's just tie these off. And you just wanna, because it's not relying on the bow to keep it together because we've already glued it. So this is just purely for decoration, so. But try and get it as tight as you can. Okay, and now I'm just finishing it off with some Nouveau drops. So I've just added a few more of these ones. This colour here is the rhubarb crumble. It goes really nicely actually with these papers. And then for this one, I'm just using my white, which is the Simply White. And you just want to do very small ones. I'm going to risk it and do them all at the same time because I haven't on the other ones. You just want to do very small ones. 
Right, so if I just bring that up, can you see just how nice they look? They just add that kind of little finishing touch. Okay, so there you have it. I'm not going to touch them too much because those Nuvo drops are still drying, but you can see now the tray there, so you've got lots of room, and there is a lot of room in these to fill with treats, and that one there as well. And I really like them. I think they've come together really nicely, and they're just a little bit different. I think with that winged effect, it does give a very different look. And yeah, I've enjoyed making them. So I hope you've liked it and um, enjoyed it as well. I hope you can do it, you know, like I want to be able to show you that you don't need to have the dye, but there are ways, you know, to get around it if you do. And uh, yeah, give it a go. Let me know what you think. Um, please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and consider subscribing so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.